okay if you guys just want to gather right in here. Perfect. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity, and by water and word, the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church to the body of Christ. Living with Christ in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Oh, see, I told him loud and proud. Good job, huh? <laughs> Called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Nolan baptized into Christ? As you bring him to receive the gift of baptism, you're entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people. Bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper. Teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Place in his hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture him in faith and prayer so that he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Parents, do you promise to help Nolan grow in the Christian faith and life? Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Nolan in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Holy Spirit and help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? I do, and I ask God to help me. Good job. People of God, that's everyone gathered here and online. You can even comment it in the comment section. Do you, in witness and love, promise to support Nolan and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, say, we do. I ask you to profess your faith in Jesus Christ and with confidence reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that, that defy God? Do you denounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? And do you denounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, say, I renounce them. We always get that part wrong. Do you renounce them? Say, I renounce them. There we go. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, holy God. You are the creator of the waters of the earth. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for springs that feed fountain and Albert Lee lakes. Honor to you for cloud and rain, for dew and snow. Your waters are below, around, above us. Our life is born in you. You are the fountain of resurrection. Praise to you for your saving water. Noah and the animals survived the flood. The Israelites escaped through the sea and they drink from your gushing rock. Naaman washes his leprosy away and the Samaritan woman will never be thirsty again. At this font, O oh God, we pray. Praise to you for the water of baptism. Breathe new life into those who are here baptized. By your spirit, adopt us all as your children through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Are you ready? ready? Nolan Eugene, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good job, man. Oh wait, I'll try to tell us. Can you take two steps back? Let us pray. Not that far away. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Nolan with the gift of your Holy Spirit 
the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Nolan, child of God, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Yep, light it now. There you go. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of the world. Well, let us welcome Nolan, the newly baptized among us. And with that, we'll hear our first song. reading today is Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonders to all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Majesty and magnificence are in your presence. Power and splendor are in your sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due the holy name. Bring offerings and enter the courts of the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord, all the earth. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is king. The one who made the world so firm that it cannot be moved will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. 
Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy at your coming, O Lord, for you come to judge the earth. You will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with your truth. I invite you to rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent out their disciples to him among with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you're sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with the truth, and you show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that you use for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? And they answered, The emperor's. And then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. And when they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. You notice since COVID started, there's limited uh, uh, Lutheran aerobics up and down. You do less of that right now. So uh, Jesus is getting political this morning. I didn't even pick the story. It is one that we use prearranged every three years. Uh, and so it just popped up. And I'm not necessarily terribly typically political in a way that makes ministry hard for me to do. I do, however, have political ba beliefs that are based on my faith, and I hope you do too. You see what I did there? I made faith first, that is God, and then put politics after it. Now, don't check out just yet, because I said the P word, politics. Uh, because faith and politics have always walked a fine line with each other, as clearly this story tells us. They've been used as poison and lure. Religion has torn our world apart and at times brought people together in the unity and community that we know and love when the church is behaving at its best. When we are behaving as a church at its best, we can listen to others and walk with them even though we disagree. As Christians, we're meant to be free-thinking children of God, set free to make choices and actions that serve both God and neighbor well. So when Jesus says, to the emperor, give the things that are the emperor's, and to God, the things that are God's, we have to do some thinking about that. Rather than just say, see, Jesus doesn't want us to mix religion and politics. I told you, I told you, I told you. Maybe we should do ourselves a favor and look a little bit deeper. Stare at the story a little bit longer. Do a little digging and see the story unfold. First of all, the money Jesus needs for ministry ends up unfolding Judas who sells off Jesus for an extra bag of money. Money and taxes aren't necessarily bad, but to Jesus it seems they are separate from the kingdom of God, the things that are God's. Jesus even has a friend that is a former tax collector, mind you, and it makes you wonder how he felt about this conversation. You see, the things that were the emperor's were things forcibly taken. The emperor was presented as a god, little g, and he controlled things like money. Oops. Money, his face was on it, by the way. And he controlled the army that bowled through Jesus' land and took control, even though they didn't ask for it. The emperor killed those who didn't follow his orders. The emperor allowed and endorsed a system of slavery and servanthood that created the rich to stay rich and the poor to stay poor. So when Jesus says, give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, he isn't just talking about money. He's talking about the corruption that comes with wealth and power. He's talking about ego unmanaged, even unhinged, in order so that power can remain powerful. Jesus, however, when he says, give to God the things that are God's, is talking about you and me. People living life, honoring life, caring for others, praying with and for others. Jesus is talking about getting after those things, rather than seeking power through fear. He's talking about resisting the temptation for the road that gives into stealing and the ego, the unmanaged and the unhinged leader who seeks power on their own. 
this story has an impact for us, not just because of politicians and those leading and running now, but because it's always been an impactful story for people who are led in ways that don't honor God. Even in non-election years, this story matters to us. Politically or not, those who amplify a world of greed and power are not part of God's world, it seems. Look, every generation has had to look at the political landscape and decide, just as every Christian must look at the world and see what belongs to God versus what things don't belong in God's world. Moses did it when he decided that his people were more important than their safety in a land where they were slaves. Jonah decides it when he realizes that his forgiveness or lack thereof isn't as important as God's worth in seeing people's forgiveness in the others. Mary, the mother of Jesus, she decides that her own shame isn't as important as the task of bringing God to live here with us. And while none of us would consider ourselves those kinds of central characters in the Bible, in God's story, we are part of God's story nonetheless. We're called to think and to do so critically as we discern the things that belong and the things that don't, the things we do and the things we don't. We have the right to stand up and to stand for those things that represent justice. We who care for creation, we who see that giving to God's world is more important than any political system and any time in history. This morning, we baptized Nolan. Collectively, we did that together. And when we do that, I don't know if you've ever noticed, I talk about this from time to time, and I just talked about it with his family. I said, you as parents don't get to hold him during the actual baptism part because the church, when we do a baptism, we trust the newly baptized to the larger church. And his sponsors represent that, the larger church. And so when he's brought to the waters of baptism, it's by someone who's not his parent. Ideally, anyway, that's how it happens. And so me and a non-parent hold him over the water at the parent's permission and baptize him. And now he's not just part of his parents' family, but he's part of the bigger family. He's part of God's family. Give to God the things that are God's. This week, you'll notice as you leave, if you go out the back doors, a box that says Jack Frost on it. And Grace was asked to host the Jack Frost coat closet giveaway. And I said, sure, we can do that. And so our stage in the fellowship hall will be uh, made into a storage room full of coats for adults and children who need them this time of year. People who are moving here from the south oftentimes don't realize how cold Minnesota gets. And so they didn't plan accordingly to get a coat that prepared them, nor do they have the money to go out and buy a $60, $70, $80 winter jacket. Kids lose them, sometimes they get stolen, I've heard of that before too, and kids are just rough on stuff, right? We all remember the days when we wore out our elbows and everything else in coats. And so the Jack Frost closet, we have a box in the back that you can put coats in. You can read about it on the box as you leave today. We'll be doing that at the end of this month and the beginning of next month. The amazing thing about the Jack Frost closet is it gives to God the things that are God's. It's not just a coat. You as a human being, a Christian living out their life in love, are giving away of something of yourself to share that warmth with someone else. You're giving to God the things that are God so that warmth can be shared with one another in a world that often gets cold around here. Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit, none of them utter the words that being a follower is an easy road. But through it all, the fullness of God, the promises of all the things that belong to God will return to God, and all the things that are rooted in selfish power, ego, and fear will be stamped out by God. No matter your political affiliation, no matter your race, your country of origin, your family background, your history, all of us, all of us can cling to the comforting truth that God will prevail in all things. As you wrestle with this story this week, I pray for you and me to hear God's calling to us with new eyes and new ears, to look beyond our fear or our self-interest and look to the wonder of God's creation all around, 
and how we can share that with one another. Give to God that which is God's, starting right here in our hearts and our minds. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. I invite you to rise as you're able. We confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Great God, we come to you in prayer for the group gathered here and online. For the people who gather as church to care for the poor, walk with the lost, and find ways to make your kingdom come. We pray especially for Nolan, who we welcome into your community today. Help us as we journey through it all. Lord, in your mercy. Great God, we ask for your blessing upon nations, for the United States as we begin the election process, for those who are at war, reveal pathways of peace, for those who are lost in hunger and disrepair, give hope and helping hands to empower new life. Lord, in your mercy. Great God, we pray for those whose harvesting in this season leads to food for all. Bless farmers, grain haulers, and others who care for God's creation. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who have died, even as we trust Marilee Sitze and Mary Lager Hagemeister to your eternal care. We ask you to surround us with healing and healthy grief, full of stories, memories, and love for their witness to you. Lord, in your mercy. We include in our prayers those with the countless others from other congregations, from dinner tables, from people all over the world, trusting that you hear each one and respond as only you can. Through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share God's peace with one another in a no-contact way.
The Lord be with you. Just as we gather, we remember that Jesus and his followers gathered together as one people. And as they did, they watched as Jesus took bread, broke it and gave it to each of his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took a cup and he passed it to all, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. As this meal is shared, let your grace be poured out to those who participate with us, even now as we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you at home and in your pews to open and share your communion with each other or with yourself. The body and blood of Christ is given and shed for you. Let the grace of this meal wash over you, the mystery of Christ dwell within you, and the power of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. We hear our song. of all creation thanks be to God for these gifts to every nation thanks be to God for the plowing sowing reaping silent growth while we are sleeping future needs in earth safe keeping thanks be to god in the just reward of labor god's will is done in the help we give our neighbor that god's will is done in our worldwide task of caring for the hungry and despairing in the harvests we are sharing god's will is done for the harvests of the spirit thanks be to god for the good we all inherit, thanks be to God. For the wonders that astound us, for the truths that still confound us, most of all that love has found us, Thanks be to God. I invite you to rise as you're able. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. We ask that you exit from back of the church to the front. Give everybody a little space. Also, these side doors are locked from the outside, but unlocked from the inside. You just push, and you can leave that way as well. Have a good day.